He sued me for triple that. Oh. And the judge awarded it to him. It's not gonna actually spray right now because I'm not moving. Because it goes with your speed of how fast you're driving. But there is gas in this oil. It's the bridges. The bridges are where it's dangerous, right here. Look at this, you can see, see that? All right, guys, here's the tale of the tape. 577 crashes last night, 168 spin outs, 23 jackknife semis, and that does not include just what happened overnight. Basically, long story short, we've got black ice conditions. We don't have a lot of snow, we got ice. And in Minnesota, we'll have twice as many icing events as we'll actually have plowing events. And Alex is coming in here. This is the first time we're going to be setting the system up this year. <clears throat> and, and there's always problems with the first go around. Almost always problems. Um, so let's just get this ball rolling. All right, so we got the brine makers tucked away in our shop here. Go ahead and pull this out, get it thrown on the truck for the first time this year, probably gonna run it through the motions a little bit. We did it when we pulled it out the first time, but we'll just do it again before we use it. So last year we bought our very first brine maker and Alex is completely sold on brine. He freaking loves this thing. The unit we bought is by VSI, and they have different sizes and different configurations available. So I highly recommend going and checking it out, checking it out before you just pull the trigger. Now the one we got that Alex really likes just slides right into the back of the truck. So we don't have to carry this thing around all the time. And we just keep a skiddy handy and a set of forks, slip it in, slip it out, and boom, Bob's your uncle. But now this is not the normal truck that we typically use this brine maker on. This is Alex's new truck and he wants to start getting this prepped and ready for snow. So we've got to make some adjustments because it's a different height. All right, well it's that easy. Go ahead and throw a couple straps on it. And fire it up here in a bit and see how it goes. Fits a little better than on my other truck. Almost enough room for a toolbox. All right, got it in there as typical. Nothing ever. Place to run, got it running. Got it filled up with brine out of our uh, brine tank over there. Got her filled up, 300 gallons in there. I probably got five or 600 to spread nice off taking on a trip back here. Go ahead and get this boom sprayer uh, attached here, the pile driver. All right, so we got a different truck here. So go ahead and slide these bolts up to the top here so that I'm not scraping the ground anymore. I'm actually really surprised that these F-350 springs uh, aren't holding up that well. I mean, my old white truck had seven leaf springs in there. And this one right here has maybe three. But that white truck had seven in there. So, I mean, this was nothing for it. I, this one here is dragging on the ground. That other truck was so tall, I actually had it on the lowest setting. So I think on this one, I'm gonna have to put it up. We had the suspension upgraded on our other F-350 Ford. And that doesn't even register when we slip this bride maker into the back. So on Alex's new Ford, this is the stock suspension and she's suffering. I don't know why, but it just doesn't want to handle this. So Alex has to raise that spray bar up to compensate because we don't want it so low that we don't get a good spread pattern as we're going down the road. Now, one of the things about these VSI sprayers is they auto adjust as you drive. All right, well, I was hoping for an easy night, but that's never how it goes. I went to go and uh, check everything, and uh, of course, hard to see in the video, but there is gas in this oil. So this uh, unit must not have gotten pumped all the way out or uh, fuel turned off and 
and ran empty because, uh, I mean, let me see if I can turn my camera on here, my flashlight. You know, it's hard to tell, but it's pretty, pretty watery, let's do this here. And it has a very gas-like smell to it. Yeah, too hard to see in the video. All right, got the world's fastest oil change done. Sounds a lot better. I can't believe that uh, I, you know, I didn't sniff the oil. I just pulled it out. It was good on the, the gauge, you know, on the dipstick and uh, fired it up. It sounded good. And eventually it ended up sounding like crap and pulled that off. And sure enough, gave it a whiff. There was some fuel in there. Lucky for me, I had some uh, 10W30 Honda oil down here. This thing should be ready to uh, run, just a temporary strap over the top so it doesn't slide around while I'm driving it. But I'll go spread this uh, brine. It's only been two hours trying to get it uh, set up. So we're gonna go out and dial the system in. What are we gonna put, 70, 100 gallons on it? Yeah, probably just a little bit, just test it out. Now you had to change oil on it? Yeah. And a new battery, right? Yep, new battery, change the oil on it. I had to adjust the bar because by the time I had it fully loaded, the truck sagged so much that the bar was only 10 inches off the ground. So then I had to readjust the bar on there. So you're not getting any weight distribution on, or any spread out no, of it? Yep. No, and we're gonna have to upgrade the suspension on this truck too, just because it sags so much, I couldn't believe it. Uh, that kind of let down for a bit and after we <laughs> But I'm used to that white truck. Yeah. <laughs> you got like F550 suspension in the white truck. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to hook her up. Now, we're going to go out and do a free job today. Yep. Yeah. For the church. We're going to do the church. So the church is, church has no money, unfortunately. I mean, it is what it is. And the church, ever since co and then the word vid, I, I'm still not allowed to put those two words together on a video. Uh, came about, the, it's an older congregation, attendance has dropped down, it's never picked back up, so we ain't even asking. And that could get me in trouble, but we're not even asking. We're just going to go out, we're going to go brine their lot, and the entire lot's on a slope like this. And these old people that do attend, man, I don't feel like hearing one of them breaking a hip. So... And when I say it could get you in trouble, don't do free work. Do you hear about that free job I did and I got sued and I lost? And, that, and I got sued three times the amount of the repair? No. So we built the boulder wall yeah. and two timbers got damaged on the neighbors that were rotted. Yeah. Okay? And Tim was like, hey, what should I do with, this, with these two timbers? I'm like, well, just replace them. You know, we're doing... Uh, a, a service for the neighbor, you know, we'll replace them, make sure that they match, make sure everything goes good, that it'll be stronger. Yeah. But we didn't ask permission from the neighbor that we replaced. It wasn't even two full timbers, it was just two partial timbers. He sued me, he got a repair to do, he got an estimate to do the repair for 3,300 bucks. He sued me for triple that. Oh. And the judge awarded it to him. Really? Yep. Damn. So I got sued, I got, I lost 9,900 bucks doing a free repair for a, a person. That sucks. So never do free. Doesn't seem to make a difference how hard we try to get ready. Something always makes life a little bit more difficult. Okay, so we've got a whole, whole load of pushers ready to go down the road. And our truck that pulls this trailer is broke down. So we've got one, two, three, four pushers there that got to get out to the site. And if we get a snowstorm, we're... The problem is the truck that pulls that trailer has had issues. So it's in the repair shop. We got another one here that needs to go. That one needs to go. We've got... Those are backups over backups and then um we are going to sell some of our back plows it's time for us to upgrade 
we've got enough accounts that we need to, uh, that one needs to go out to a job site, but we're gonna sell these back bars. That one's the front. We're selling the short iron. We're gonna sell this snow power. We're gonna sell that boss. And that's a front plow. So, and then that is an MVP3, a Heineken, and another MVP3. We're gonna hold on to those and sell them. We're selling the trucks that those go on, so that's gonna get sold as a unit. And then we're gonna sell this back plow as well. So, if anybody's in the market, you can hit up Alex. All right, loaded up, loaded for bear. Let's get going. If you're not familiar with black ice, it occurs when the liquid comes out of the exhaust of the vehicles and dumps onto the road. And that liquid is usually black. And when it hits the roads, it can refreeze and create real dangerous conditions. It's the bridges. The bridges are where it's dangerous, right here. Look at this, you can see, see that? The bridges, what happens is they get the, the cold wind coming up from underneath them and then they freeze. They thaw, they freeze, they thaw, they freeze. You get more spin outs around bridges than any other area of the road. So if you happen to be, you know, not native to uh, areas like Minnesota or other places like that, if you're going down the road, just be careful of the bridges. Another thing about black ice is it blends in with the pavement. So instead of being able to prepare and look ahead and go, oh, I see an icy patch up ahead, it just hits you out of nowhere. Three, two. Everything's working, so All right. now, now I can switch it to auto and run it. So. Alex just demonstrated was the ability to control the left, right, or center boom independently. And this also tracks how much material you put down, which is absolutely huge to protect yourself against slip and falls. And as he speeds up or slows down, you'll notice that the volume of material coming out will change to match his rate of speed. The main difference between brine and rock salt is the amount of material that you actually apply to the surface and how effective that is. By taking rock salt and putting it into a liquid solution, you are creating brine, but that spreads much further than just by laying a rock salt granular down and hoping that the right conditions occur so that that rock salt will spread naturally on its own. You're forcing the chemical reaction which means you're using less material and getting it applied right where you want it. I like how it has that automatic stop too. So if this button accidentally got clicked, it wouldn't just rip your head off while you're driving, it automatically stop. Like right there, it just stopped for me. All right, Alex, you've used it now for a year. Walk me through this, will you? This is the Legacy Series by VSI. Uh, gas engine right here. Everything's controlled by your phone. You go ahead and put this on there. Turn that switch on there. We head over to the phone. We go right here to details. It pops right up on here for connection. I connect to it. I can come over here. I can turn the choke up. You can see the choke actually coming and electronically going right there. Holy crap. Okay. I can throttle it up right here. Put it back down to an idle. Got lights. The hose reel, I turn on the hose tracking right there. It idles it up and sends water pressure to that right there. You go right here onto auto, you can adjust your gallons per acre. You know, if you're pre-treating, you're going to be at 40, and I believe post-treating is more like 80. If I can remember right, it's been a while since we yeah. went over this kind of stuff, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 40 and 80. Those are pretty easy numbers to remember, but then it's just a matter of clicking these on right here. It's not going to actually spray right now because I'm not moving. 
because it goes with your speed of how fast you're driving. Yeah. So. And it's pretty safe to say this has been your favorite unit. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I had never done anything with the Brian before, and, and this is a totally different game right here. The amount of money you can make with it and the good you're doing for the environment with it, it definitely is. Uh, a lot less salt use. Yep, way less. 30% uh, compared to what you're using with rock salt. Yep. Yep. All right, well, and we're actually looking at buying a second unit. Yeah, we got an opportunity to possibly brine a lot of other accounts, so. So we got a lot of schools, and the schools, since it's for the public, right? Yep. They're interested in the least amount of salt usage possible, so that's perfect. That's right, yeah. That's a perfect application for a brine unit, because they know how much less salt you're using. So. Especially like the municipalities like that, they, they are more keen to observing how much salt they put down rather than like a commercial lot where they just want it down they know? just want it down and just make sure no one slips and falls exactly but this also tracks that's the other thing too this will actually track when you put it down your application how many gallons you use and you can even set it up so that i believe it can show you a chart on there of where you went on right there, that's huge that eliminates slip and falls because if you did your job mm -hmm. and you have to go to court if you're in the salt, if you're in the snow game, you need to have that absolutely hardcore record yeah. to protect yourself from slip and falls, because that's what happens. Yeah, some people it actually happens to them, and it, and it's unfortunate. But there's other people that are out there just to get you. Yeah, you know they're out there just looking for money. And that's gonna call it for this video. We got out here. We got the entire church parking lot treated. We won't have any of the old folks falling and slipping on us. And uh, they don't even know we were out here, which makes it even kind of better, in right. my, yeah. my and opinion. They won't even know. I mean, their lot will be white, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's it for this one. God bless. Go get them. Stay safe. Stay warm, my friends. And wherever you are, I hope you have an awesome day. Catch you on another one.